Hello and welcome to Shop Talk with Dan the Man. Today's video you're in for a treat. We're going to review this bad boy. This is a rigid 15 amp 10 inch pro job site table saw. Stay tuned to find out more. Hello, if you're new to this channel, my name is Dan Shannon. I enjoy woodworking as a hobby and being out in the shop. On this channel, dive deep into my shop as we explore tools and tool reviews as well as chatting about everything related to woodworking. If this grabs you by the tool belt, please subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this. Welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to review this. This is the 15 amp 10 inch model number R4514 Pro job site with stand. This saw is great for those who have a small shop like I do. This table saw will fold up. You can roll it up against the wall. I'll show you how to uh, prop it up on the stand once it's compacted. Uh, you know a little bit later on in the video but this is just a great saw uh, for that use you can travel with it uh, if you do carpentry uh, on the road or maybe you have a shop like mine like I said where you need something that's small that's gonna fold up it's still gonna give you that same power you need to cut 4x4s in different degrees uh, some of the features on the saw this has a 30 inch rip capacity and what that means is from the blade to your fence is 30 inches for the rip capacity it has a four second uh, break stop so some of the older saws when you would turn the saw off the blade would keep rotating uh, this here has a quick four second uh, stop time which is amazing because if something happens and you're running a board through and it pinches uh, the faster the blade stops the better it also can rip a 4x4 with a single pass, which is very impressive. It doesn't slow down or bog down. It just runs the 4x4 uh, the four four through. Now keep in mind, you need a sharp blade. Uh, make sure your blades are always uh, you know, sharp uh, when you're using them. If you have an old blade, of course, it would bog the motor down. So make sure you have a nice sharp blade. This also has some um, T-slots. Uh, on your uh, front of your top so you can slide accessories um, depending on what you're doing uh, for cuts it has a max depth cut of two and one quarter at a 45 degree and three and one half inch at the 90 degree so that's useful for a variety of cuts uh, I'll show show you that uh, a little bit later on we'll look at the face of the saw and the different uh, cuts and angles the saw can do it also has rigid's lifetime service agreement so we covered a little bit on the um, specs on the saw so let's uh, let's dive in a little bit better uh, with some of the features so features coming right up So the first feature we're going to dive into is the stand. So a lot of times, smaller shop, it's the reason why I bought the saw. Uh, you can maneuver it around just like a dolly. It's got that same kind of edging as a dolly. It's got tires, so you can wheel it wherever you want to go. And once you get to that spot where you'd like to set your stop, you can just tip it down. There's a little foot lever here that releases it from the lock. These wheels will roll towards you and you just tip it down. Very smooth, very easy. The saw is exactly snapped upright. Now, once you have the saw done for the day, you're done cutting. Also, if you wanna move the saw around, they have a nice handle 
on this side you can just lift up wheel it back and forth whatever your preference put it back down and then when you're done for the day come back over on this side same foot lever push in the foot lever and the whole thing just pivots down just like that and then you slide the entire foot uh, pedal this is a bar here you can just push on that make sure it does lock in the lock position uh, and it's not going to move on you and then you can just put your foot in just like you would a dolly tip it back and then wheel it wherever you'd like I store mine to the back of the shop like that as you can see in my shop it's a small profile doesn't stick out from the ball very much and uh, gives you uh, lots of space in your shop and uh, if I need to cut a sheet of plywood I can wheel this outside it's a great feature rigid so glad you added that uh, to this saw compared to a cabinet saw cabinet saw would be full-time standing would take up a large uh, section of my shop I can't afford to lose that space so it's just great product all right let's move on to some other features all right so we're at the face of the saw it gives you an idea what the front looks like so this is where all your uh, changes would be done for your blade height and your power it's pretty straightforward your on switch this does have a lockout feature so if you are off site and you don't want anyone to power it on you can just push this in and there's a little uh, spot where a lock can go through uh, just to make sure that this uh, tool won't be turned on what I also like about this on and off switch is once you turn the power on of course it charges up the saw but if you run into a situation say you're running through a board pinches or you have kickback for emergency sake you can just tap your knee uh, up against that or any body part uh, hand and it will completely kill the saw so you don't have to be reaching around and trying to fumble around for the switch you just tap that kills the saw so what a great uh, great feature for that and uh, we'll first slide into your bevel so you have 0 to 45 and that's easily accessible you just uh, pull this forward it unlocks it there is a ring around this outside edge you just turn this ring till it reaches the desired bevel and once you get to the bevel that you want we'll bring it to 30 So it's at 30 right now. Once you confirm that that's the degree you want, just lock it back in. Perfect. Blades exactly where you want. Uh, you can also take a square and put it up against your blade and then make sure the angle is the exact angle that you were looking for. And I recommend always on a table saw when you first get it, make sure everything's accurate and true. Nothing worse than uh, starting a project realizing your fence was off and you don't have square uh, joints when you go to build a cabinet or a shelf all right so that's that feature reel that back to zero okay lock it in and how to raise and lower the blade so here you'll notice there's a lock and unlock uh, dial and then of course you have this knob to crank and lower uh, your blade so i'll just raise this up slightly so you can see the blade at the same time so in order to raise it we just do the unlock so you can see the arrows very clearly marked you just turn that all the way till it's loose you don't have to loosen it too much and then to raise the blade you this until it gets to the desired height so that's full capacity right there actually uh, goes a bit higher 
And then once you get it to the desired height, you just rotate this until it's snug. That means it's locked in place and it can't move on you. So you'll also notice on the face that we have a latch here and a piece sticking out here. So this latch is, so once it's unlocked, you can move the entire, expand the tabletop. And what's nice about that is your tape, which I'll show you that in a minute, uh, will move automatically. Really cool feature, but that's the front and that's the lock. So down here, this thing that's sticking out is a push stick. So just pull back on it, it comes out. I thought that was great that Rigid had that right in the front uh, for safety, because a lot of times, um, once you start cutting a board, you realize, oh shoot, where's my uh, push stick? Well, it's right here. So I usually take it out first, have my fence, put it on top of the fence. That way it's always there uh, as you're cutting. A uh, good safety tip, uh, you're not wandering around or, or looking for this uh, safety tool after the fact. And as we go to the far end, you'll notice there's something clamped to uh, the end. So we'll just uh, slide around to view that. Is your um, T gauge. So that just that's just in a piece of plastic. It's kind of clamped on there. So you can just loosen it and it comes right out. And that's it. So you can put that on the top of your saw and it follows the T-track uh, to do different cuts. And of course, you have your different degrees, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So that's another uh, feature that's tucked away on the side. And I love how it's all incorporated into the saw. Uh, you don't have to carry all these parts with you. It's literally all on the saw. And then there's some more features uh, around the other side. So let's zip around to that side. So we're on the end of the saw, the opposite side, and you'll notice your power cord. It's coiled up here on the end, which is great. Uh, so the wires aren't hanging down as you're uh, moving. So that's a great, uh, great setup. It's just two notches on either side and you just coil the, the wire. And you also have your two adjustment wrenches. So these are to take the blade on and off uh, with your um, two wrenches here. In order to remove these, there's just a butterfly bolt. You just undo that all the way, back it all the way off, and these will slide off. So that's that feature. So these are uh, your safety um, devices for kickback. Uh, so this is a guard. Uh, that helps you um, protect your fingers from the blade and this just pops off uh, there's a little switch back there and the whole thing comes off uh, and I'll show you how to mount that in a minute so we'll just set that down for a second and then back here there's uh, these teeth and these are also for kickback it's another safety um, feature for this tool to protect uh, from, from wood. So these spikes hold the boards down, keep them from kicking kicking back. All right, so let's, uh, let's go see where the fence is mounted. So here we are at the back of the saw and Rigid's made a good point to uh, once again, keep all of your features to this tool and your accessories mounted directly on this unit. So you got these two black straps they're rubberized, so they have some stretch to them. In order to remove this fence, it's pretty straightforward. You just remove the one tab, it notches in. Remove your other tab. And then this whole unit just picks up. You pick it up this way, and then slide it towards yourself, and it comes right off. So there's the fence, uh, the in installation to put it back. Same idea, slide that underneath. Make sure these rubber tabs are on the front of it so they don't get stuck in behind. You can latch it back, but you do everything in reverse. All right, so let's look at the top of the 
um, table saw and we'll show you how to put on the fence and the two safety guards. Okay, so we're at the top of the saw. I'm going to show you the fence. We removed it from the back. I'll just give you a preview of the fence first. You notice here on the back side, of course, you have your locking uh, tab. Oh, I got some sawdust in there. Nice. Uh, locking tab. You got your um, arrow for your tape to see what the degree is that you have uh, measured. You also notice an interesting uh, small bar on this. Well, the goal for this is say you're cutting uh, something small, piece of trim, uh, something that's not very high. Uh, this is another type of fence. So in order to bring that to the side that you need it, it just literally flips around and then you put your fence back down. So that's a really cool feature uh, Ridge you came up with. A lot of fences don't have this uh, piece added. So I thought that was a really cool uh, thing to add. So in order to get the fence in, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just, there's a 45, close to a 45. And then of course on your back side, same idea. So you want to bring the front end first, bring your, your end in, make sure they're pretty well parallel to each other. And then it should just slide in. This is, slick as that. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get used to how to line this up. I know for the first little bit it took me a little bit to, to get that lined up. But after a while you get used to it. Uh, make sure it's moving really smooth. Uh, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be uh, jagged or anything. It should it should actually sit in there really nicely. So make sure you test it out and then once you get it to where you want it you just lock it in. So it's very straightforward. The fence uh, is designed very well. Uh, it's quite heavy duty. I've seen really thin fences that uh, kind of flimsy, but this fence I find is quite wide and seems to be really solid uh, as far as um, you know build quality. It also has a track in here, so you can slide clamps if you have a, uh, a board that you want to put on the end. You can actually slide, there's a track here, you can actually slide a clamp system uh, in there if you'd like. There's, we could go on and on about uh, the different features, different techniques on the table saw. This is just a quick review. Uh, so let's uh, keep going on that. What you're going to want to do first time you use your table saw right out of the box is make sure it's accurate. So what I mean by that is, is your fence plumb with your blade. So in order to find that out, you just bring your fence over, take a tape measure, measure from the tooth on this side, and then measure from the tooth on this side, and then make sure your separation knife on your back of your blade is not too far over. So you also want to take a measurement into that to make sure this is true and not slightly off. Because what will happen is you drive a board through, and in the front, say the back is slightly off. Well, what's going to happen is it's going to create a pinch point. So if you're running three inches in the front and it's slightly less uh, than three inches in the back, it'll actually pinch the board and allow for kickback. So you really don't want that. So one more accessory uh, to go over is this uh, T uh, track square. Um, this allows you to do different cuts uh, from the side of the blade versus parallel cuts along the fence. So to install this, you've seen where it was mounted on the side of the saw. So you just remove that from its um, enclosure. And there's a little uh, track piece on the end that slides in along the top of the surface. And now that we have this in the track, uh, this primarily is used for um, cross cuts. So your fence, uh, when you throw a board through lengthwise, which is a rip cut, so that means it rips it down the middle. Normally on a table saw, I try not to do because I have a sliding miter saw. Um, I don't overly recommend it, but it does work really well. Uh, you have your different uh, degrees 
anywhere from 60 um, to zero, and then of course 60 the opposite way. Uh, so in order to get your degree, so say you want to just cut a regular 90 degree uh, cut, you just hold on to this um, back plate and your board and just slide it through um, as per normal. But if you wanted to do a degree cut, you would loosen this, you would change your uh, positioning of this back plate. Say we want it at 30 degrees, you would tighten this knob, put your board on, and then of course run it the same process through your blade. Now there is two tracks on the back here, which is good to note because you can get a longer board uh, attachment gives you a more height so if you have a board that's higher uh, of course with this if you're running a higher board uh, it, at the top it's going to get a little rocky so you're going to want to have a little bit more height to your square so I'd recommend getting a board putting a track in it you can actually buy them uh, and then this um, bolt slides right down here with a washer on either side to clamp into so look on this tool, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. Um, if it's off a little bit, there's some adjustments, adjustment screws. So now we're going to show you how to install the two accessories that came with this table saw for safety. Uh, you know, one is the kickback teeth and the other is your finger guard. So in order to install the kickback uh, teeth, there's a little notch here on the end so there's a little track as you can see um, in the middle and that just slides up with or lines up rather with the, the hole push down on this lever and then you can hold with one hand uh, the teeth up push in on this button and it will lock down into the slot and that's it Double check, make sure it's in there nice and nice and tight. You don't want to be running a board through and then have this pop out. And then for your safety guard for your fingers, um, you flip it over. There is a locking mechanism on the top that is unlocked. Of course, down is locked. So in order to uh, slide that on, same idea as this. Uh, with this front notch, you just line it up until it pops into its spot that it should pop into. And then, uh, of course, you just lock it in place. So, just make sure it's where it needs to be. That uh, feels quite solid there. Uh, these allow for movement. Make sure that uh, it's not going anywhere. So as you slide your board through, It'll lift these two guard uh, pieces on either side to protect your fingers uh, from the blade. And the goal of this, once again, is, is safety. So get your teeth in the back. As you slide your board through, it'll grab on these teeth. And the goal with that is once you slide a board through, it'll clamp down slightly. And if there's ever a pinch in the blade, the teeth will actually lock in on the board and it won't come back towards you. So that's a great, great safety feature. If you're doing dado cuts, you can't use any of this stuff. Even the driving knife or dividing knife needs to be removed uh, for dado cuts. That's a different uh, thing altogether. We won't get into that. But this is just a review on um, the different accessories. To remove that, you just undo the tab, slide it up, comes off with this one you just push down on this push in the button and it just lifts off you might want to you know kind of keep your hands these are quite sharp also you don't want to scratch your table too much so just kind of be cautious uh, with this unit so one more feature with this um, table saw is you have your throat plate it's called the throat plate because your blade goes up through it uh, in order to remove it there's a lock and unlock so you just twist this to the unlock there's a little finger hole 
and you just pry it up. There's two, or there's one uh, tab on the back that to put it back in place, you just line it up and it drops back in. Of course, you lock it to the on position. Um, so remove that. You'll notice you have access to your blade and also your knife on the back. Uh, there is a lever on the inside. Let's see if you can see that. I'll move the camera. Okay, so there's the inside. There is the uh, locking mechanism. And you'll notice on the knife there's different holes. And to change the height of that or to take it off completely, you just unloosen it with that locking orange piece and uh, it'll pull right out or you could just adjust it based on height. Also, you'll notice the blade and the bolt. Uh, so when you're removing the blade, obviously make sure it's unplugged um, before you touch anything to do with the blade um, or using the tool um, inside here. You don't want it to turn on by accident. But you use those two wrenches that I showed you on the bottom side of the saw and uh, put one on either side and then do opposite to loosen the blade uh, back the bolt off slide on your new blade uh, make sure it's lined up and uh, just reinstall the the bolt again so that's a look down inside um, sometimes sawdust will get down in here so often i'll remove the throat plate go down there with the shop back and just make sure everything's cleared out. Uh, one time I was cutting a bunch and the sawdust built up in there. Uh, I was wondering why it wouldn't raise or lower uh, with the saw and it's because there was too much sawdust in there uh, that had built up uh, from cutting. So it's important to keep that clear uh, for safety too. Okay, we're gonna do some hands-on with this tool. I'm gonna to do a pass through the saw. Uh, you'll get a preview of how it cuts, the motor sound, uh, the stop and start on the motor. So I'm just gonna fire it up and show you the brake, uh, four second brake uh, that it has. It's pretty impressive. So you just press the power button like I mentioned earlier. So that's the brake on it. That's really impressive in my in my books uh, for the brake system. Uh, older saws, of course, they just keep rotating, seem like forever, probably like a minute. Uh, but with the new brake system, it stops uh, quite instantly. So <clears throat> we have our board. First thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your blade is the proper height. Uh, so we're just gonna do a straight cut. It's not gonna be uh, anything uh, too, too crazy, uh, 45 or uh, different angles. We're just going to do a straight, uh, straight cut. So you're going to want to check the depth of your blade. So I recommend uh, your blade height to be, uh, you just want your carbide tips um, just above the board. Now, not too uh, low because if the board will rock up slightly, you want to make sure the teeth are still above the above the board. So probably I would say uh, you know probably quarter inch, give or take. Uh, now everyone has different opinion about that. So people say you want your blade to be higher because uh, then it does more power cutting down through the the board. But I see it more as a safety uh, concern. And the more the top of the blade is exposed, the more chances you could be cut. Uh, also with kickback, there's less blade above uh, the board itself. So therefore, uh, you know, it should have less kickback because there's less power over top of the board to, to grab the board and, and throw it back. So in order to do that, you just put your board up against your blade and then uh, use your uh, bottom crank, like I showed you previously, uh, to lower your blade. So we'll do that now. So that's the height that I want. I'm going to lock it in place. 
turning that outside knob. And then for your uh, measurement, like I said, there's a tape on the edge, slide your fence. So I get the measurement that I want. You can also double check, uh, raise this up and put a tape uh, from your fence to the, make sure it's the inside of your carbide not the outside because you still have your blade thickness in the cut. Uh, some people won't take a, a pen or not a pen, but a pencil, carpenter's pencil. Mark an X on the uh, off cut, uh, the part that they're uh, throwing out or discarding. So the finished product on the inside is what they're using. It just depends on the person. Sometimes I'll do that. So if it's very similar in size, the inside versus the outside, I will do the X so I know when I'm building a project I have the right board that I'm using. So just little things like that you can remember. So get your measurement that you want, lock your fence down, and like I said before I always pull out the push stick and leave it to the side of the saw. That way as I'm cutting and I need the push stick I'm not fumbling around or reaching down and trying to grab it. I have it right at arm's grip uh, right to the side. So before we cut with the saw, we're going to want to make sure we practice our safety push stick. Uh, we need some headphones because this is high decibel. And of course, safety glasses. Uh, sometimes you'll have a board, uh, you'll have a slight sliver that could come up at your face or a little piece that'll slide down between the throat plate and the blade and it will stick up. If the blade ever caught that, it could throw it back. So just uh, better safe, right? So let's put on our headphones. We're all set, ready to, uh, to put this board through. Let's fire up the saw. Now a lot of times another safety protocol is if you have a longer board, this is a short one, uh, usually I just let it go off on the floor, but if you have a long length, you're going to want to have some saw horses or uh, depending on the size of the shop, another table set up that's slightly lower uh, so that when you feed your product through, it'll have somewhere to land. There's nothing worse than running through a big board and having uh, it start to bobble or come up uh, and you're trying to push it down while you're trying to push it through very unsafe uh, so if you don't have a table or saw horses uh, it's good to have um, you know maybe your spouse or a friend uh, you know or if you're on the job site another worker uh, to go on the far side of the saw as you're feeding through the product and uh, and grab it on the other side uh, just for safety you definitely don't want to operate this tool. It's very dangerous, um, you know, if you don't follow the proper safety. So some final thoughts on this table saw and the use features and accessories. I would highly recommend this saw for anyone that has a smaller shop like myself and needs a saw that will break down uh, easy for storage. Also, that's robust enough to handle any jobs you would throw at it, any type of wood you would throw at it. It has the horsepower and the strength to cut 4x4s in half. Just a great tool. Uh, or if you're in construction, it's portable. You can wheel it on the back of a truck or into a vehicle uh, with ease. So every tool has its place. Uh, this tool has a place. In my shop, hopefully it has a place uh, in your shop, depending on your needs. And I love the fact that if I'm, like I said, if I'm in the shop and I need to cut a sheet of plywood, this can just wheel out the door. I can get the 30 inch cut that I need, the rip, and uh, run a sheet through. So it's very diverse, uh, very um, built very well. And I would highly recommend, and don't forget with Rigid, 
you have the LSA. So if anything happens with this tool, you have 90 days to register it from the date of purchase. Uh, I encourage you to do that if you buy one of these tools. That way you're set for life. If anything happens to it, like I said, yeah, they'll fix it or uh, replace it. Uh, so once again, just always follow the proper safety because uh, at the end of the day, you want to keep all these intact and uh, make sure you're not harmed yourself. So once again, uh, thanks for watching this video. Please uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to uh, watch this video here. And uh, thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.